You're listening to Innovation for Alpha, where we explore everything at the intersection of healthcare innovation and finance. Through our discussions and interviews, we keep you informed and educated about healthcare innovations, next level venture investing, and everything involving the combination of the two. Hi, everybody. This is Tobin Arthur, your host for Innovation for Alpha. And today I've got Scott Bertrand with me, and I'm really excited to spend some time with Scott and share his story with you. Scott's a terrific entrepreneur who's got an amazing product that all of you should know about. And so Scott, appreciate you spending some time and and, uh, sharing your story today. Good morning, Tobin. And thank you so much for allowing me to interact with your audience. I know you've got a very prestigious group of listeners and I'm looking forward to that conversation. Well, thank you. Tell us a little bit about your background, Scott. We'll get into all core 360 here in a minute, but you know, what was your history? Uh, well, I because it's important in the um, evolution of the all Corps, I started as a veteran in the 101st Airborne. I went on to become a, a pharmacist and then went on to become a chiropractor. I spent 35 years um, in, in that chiropractic scenario. And then during that time, I invented the all Corps 360. And here in the last 10 years, when I had my chiropractic practice, I could wrap my arms around a community or a neighborhood. But with the all Corps, I can wrap my arms around the world, and we're really excited about doing that. I love it. And physically, you're based and headquartered in Atlanta, correct? Yes, sir. Awesome. Down in the South. And um, so, so tell us about how, what was the inspiration for the All Corps? Um, how, did, how did it come to mind? Okay. That's, a, that's an interesting story, and it's a good question, because um, what happened to me, and, and, and many times in that medical innovation world, you'll find that the impetus of the motivation of the new device was a personal thing. It was either their family or themselves. And I suffered a, uh, a low back fracture and a skydiving injury uh, and was thrust into that spinal cord injury market as a 19 year old in the service. And what I realized even then was that the approach was, uh, I would just say it wasn't very logical and it was very painful. Uh, and I I realized real early on that for someone to stay in a program like that, they'd have to have the courage of being able to undertake that pain. I, I stayed with it for a while, but even then, intuitively, I knew that wasn't quite right. Didn't have my finger on why it was wrong, but it wasn't quite right. Hmm. But because of that injury, I went on to become a chiropractor. And then as I'm finishing up chiropractic school, I dive into a swimming pool and break my neck. Right. And so, by the way, I don't, I don't dive anymore. I'm a on the ground kind of guy. But I get thrust right back into that spinal cord injury space with the hopes that over that 10 or 15 years that there'd been massive advances in medicine. Well, there had there wasn't, Tobin. I walked right into that fat facility and it was the exact same thing that failed me 15 years earlier. Wow. So I realized really early on that there needed to be a change. And what we like to say real popular now is we had to come up with something that would disrupt the market. But it, we had to do that. It, the market was wrong. Hmm. And it was, I I kind of found it interesting that we even in our contemporary training ever thought what we were doing was right. You know, we're just that much different. That's amazing. That's how it started. I got beat up and I had to try to fix myself. So after I got myself put back together, I realized I wasn't the only beat up person on the planet and that there are a lot of us out there that could take advantage of the results I was experiencing. So it's become a business and I've been blessed. Well, as you've been, as you were thinking about that then, and, and maybe kind of transitioned from what was broken and how did you start thinking about that differently? What led you to the inspiration or the insight that this was the, really a model that was going to make a difference? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. And what I realized early on when I was going through the, the therapy, uh, and there are several contemporary errors, I think, and I'll try to point out a few of these quickly, but the very first one I realized is they were training or rehabilitating the body in an isotonic fashion, which means they were shortening the muscle fibers. They were bending and twisting and sit-ups and crunches and side bends and all these things that were extremely brutal and uncomfortable. But what I realized real quickly was that's not how we use our core. That's not how we use our trunk. If you think about, and I'll speak to myself here, but think of the thousands, if not millions of sit-ups I've done in my life to realize that once I left the gym, I was never called upon to do that ever again. Hmm. Why was I spending so much energy developing a skill set that we really don't use? Hmm. So what I did, excuse me, <clears throat> what I did was, and I think this is really important in healthcare, 
everything in the body has a survival value. And if we realize what that survival value was, and then did the best as a physician to encourage the body to use that and improve that survival value, that's what I think we step in as physicians. So I looked at what is the true survival value of the trunk or the core? It's not to flip and flop and bend and twist, Tobin. That's not what it's for. It's basically this huge muscular armor designed to protect all those important critical elements that are in the trunk. Not the organs, obviously, being super important, but the central nervous system. Yeah. So that's kind of what it's there to protect. And then the second thing is, it's not, again, not designed to flip and flop. In fact, what it's designed to do is isometrically maintain a perfect posture. Because when the body's out of a perfect posture, it gets damaged. Mm -hmm. So when you lean and lift something, you may hurt something. So the body's job or the core's job is to rapidly get you into a perfect posture. So realizing that was a survival value, how do we encourage the body to make that better, to make that survival value better? So first off, it had to be isometric. And I'm looking across the board at all the things we do for the core. And the only thing that was isometric was planks. Planks are correct. But and then we, let's look at planks real quickly. Planks isometric, which is fabulous. But you have to have a good arm and a good elbow and a good shoulder. And if you're right-handed, you plank better than your left side. And, and that's not really the way I think it needs to be trained. And what Planks did, it pointed out the value of isometric. It started a, a market, Pilates. It's a, it's a movement. But what it did was it took the core, and instead of making a, a muscular tube that can move in 360 degrees, it chose one or two directions to challenge it. Well, that's great in those one or two directions. But what about, I mean, in a 360 degree machine, you really can't just train three or four degrees and expect that machine to be optimal. Mm -hmm. So it had to be isometric. It had to use the full 360 degrees of the core's potentiality. And then the other thing I thought was critical was I, I realized how unbalanced we are when we currently train the core or the trunk. And I, I'll just, as an example, we walk into the gym and we walk over to the crunch machine. We're all familiar with the crunch machine. We grab a, a selector and push the pin in at L, whatever L is, we stick it in at L. And then we do as many of those as we can do, wh whatever that is. And then we walk over to, and by the way, that exercise could take six, seven, eight, 10 minutes to do that properly. Then we walk over to the dumbbell rack and we grab some dumbbells and start doing side bends because we know we're supposed to do something for our oblique muscles. But you know, we grab these dumbbells and we start doing this and what I ask people now is, what dumbbell did you pick up? Well, I picked up 25-pound dumbbells. Why didn't you pick up 30s? Well, I don't really know. Well, does that 30 or 25 equal L on the machine? Well, no, it doesn't. And so we spend hour or more, 45 minutes to an hour, training our core and working very hard to make it unbalanced. Wow, what a horrible concept. And then we walk out of the gym with back pain, and then we wonder why back pain is epidemic. We train it wrong. We rehabilitate it wrong. We don't even understand how it works. So that's kind of what the impetus was to get the all core together. And at the end of the day, the all core is a 360 degree plank without depending on your upper or lower extremities. So we can treat that paralyzed person. We can treat that amputee. We can treat that 75 year old person with blown out knees. Everybody that has the ability to sit can take advantage of our, our device and optimize their core. And that's the goal. When your core is optimum, oh, you can go bang a golf ball and you go bang a baseball, you can do anything you want, but you don't train a core by swinging at a baseball. You train a core perfect first, then take that core and go hit a baseball. So that's kind of where we're at. And that's where we came with up to the idea. And it's, it's worked remarkably well, Tobin. The results in the enhancement space are overwhelming. We've had some incredible professional athletes improve, but that enhancement and that post-traumatic spinal cord injury, traumatic brain injury space are near miraculous. And we all know people that have had strokes. We owe it to those people to help them. And we have the capacity to give them a lot of results. We've had a lot of research, Tobin, and the research is validating what we're saying by some very renowned institutions. And we're very blessed with all that. You had mentioned, uh, which I thought was really an interesting visual, that rehab patients, you know, early on, you had rehab patients going through the protocol and, and lo and behold, they were coming out with six pack abs after working out for a while. You thought there's something interesting going on here. How does this, 
Um, and, and so there is a, as you mentioned, there's a range here. There's, there's everything from rehab um, to, you know, to being proactive and, and, and training, you know, whether that's for athletics or just general health. And so the types of practices, clinics, talk a little bit about who is installing the unit, you know, how they're necess- maybe implementing a little couple examples of that. Okay. Well, it, again, it started in that spinal cord injury space. And like you alluded to a minute ago, when we realized our paraplegic patients were sporting six packs that we all wanted, it obviously moved into that space and the optimal, the optimization space, but that spinal cord injury space. So those hospitals and those people that treat those people that are in that space to me, that's where my heart's at. And we always want to deal with those people and work with those people. And we, we, we strive to take care of that space. Mm -hmm. The next space that is an obvious extension for our device is that functional wellness space. And the reason I like that space so much is, I mean, I'm a baby boomer and the baby boomers are getting old. And what we're realizing is we don't have that 20 year old physique anymore, but we want to do 20 year old things still. So what we have to do is get on top of them early protect our spine, protect our internal organs, and then we can function through life like we want to. And then that, that reversing that aging process. I want to be 100, Tobin, but I don't want to have to be sitting in pain. So I want to be functional. Yeah. So that space is growing dramatically, and they have really been able to utilize our device in, in a very specific manner for that particular population. How the next population, I would say, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, uh, maybe give an example there, but let's talk about the other population too. But uh, these groups, how are they finding out about you? Is this word of mouth at this point? Are you at certain shows? How does the word spread? You know, we did a few shows early on, and that was advantageous. And since you have seen the device, Tobin, you can relate to this, but it really requires the experience to understand. You can look at it and understand it physiologically and intellectually. But until you actually experience, you really can't tell the difference. So if there is a challenge to us, it's getting people to actually experience the device. Yeah. We have gone to shows and that allows people to get on the device. Um, but it's, it's a device that requires a team of people to kind of look at if you brought it into an institution. So it's just working through all those people. Yeah. Word of mouth has probably been our, our, our best uh, form of advertising because it's the patients themselves that are going out and spreading the word. It's them bringing their mothers and brothers and sisters and relatives in that eventually realize that I need one closer to me that drives that, you know, that eventual market for the provider to get it. I will say this in reference to the providers, um, because it's so unique. And I realized that we're all in that marketing space, even though we're healthcare providers, it draws a lot of new patients into a practice because of its innovation and its design. And I think that gives the provider the, the, the chance to at least share with that patient whatever services they have to offer other than the Alcor. So it allows an exposure into a practice where that practice can then expose the patient to whatever else they have available. So it's a nice synergy and it works really well. We grow with each other. Well, and, I, and I'm sorry, I cut you off a few minutes ago. You were, you were kind of walking through the continuum. So the, the other types of You've got rehab, you've got the, the wellness right. clinic, um, kind of move, the, multidisciplinary. The next one's that chiropractic physical therapy space. They, it, it does so much for low back pain and low back pain is almost epidemic that it obviously was going to end up in chiropractic and physical therapy offices. And it has, mm-hmm. and they've done remarkably well treating their patients in that fashion. In the chiropractic space, it was kind of their missing link. They can do the osseous work they can get the bones and the joints aligned but balancing the muscular system that holds that in place was always a weak link so that's that worked out well and then the final one and i think that you kind of alluded to it again earlier in reference to our paralyzed patients ending up with six packs it jumped into that that optimization space very rapidly and what we're seeing is those rotational athletes that really rely on a strong balanced core uh adapting adopting this very quickly and, and what I've said early on, I'm okay about breaking up broke or fixing up broken bodies, but please let's just not break them up. So if I can prevent injury, that's the goal. And that's where we're at in that sports space. And if I see one more kid get paralyzed in football, I'm going to lose my mind. Mm-hmm. We've got something that can help stop that. Why a high school wouldn't, when I, when a parent takes a child to a coach 
you're basically giving your child to that coach. But what you're really saying is train him as best you can, but don't give him back to me broke up. Yeah. Don't bring my child back to me injured. I'm relying on you to protect my child. Mm-hmm. And if there's a technology out there that can do that and it's not being used, shame on the coach for not using it and finding it. You know, right. and, and our job is to make sure they're aware of it. That's a great point. And, you know, there's another interesting niche that's developed and you and I've talked about this, but military and, and probably even space. And so people probably wouldn't even think of that, but these are people that are going through extreme pressure on their bodies. That's a, that's a pretty neat little, you know, additional niche. But we've been really excited to work with the military. I'm a veteran and this started in that space. I would love to be able to get into those veteran hospitals and take care of those people that were hurt representing our country. Uh, but on that other side, in the fighter pilot arena, they are subjected to so much intense G-force and G-stress. Our device basically uses the vectors and the force of gravity to train the body. So this is what they actually use when they fly. And we're there at the Air Force Base now at Nellis. And we're also just starting in with NASA. And like we suggested, NASA also obviously goes through all those gravitational stresses. But what I found real interesting in reference to NASA And I hadn't thought of this, but one of the challenges they have is when they bring an astronaut in from space, after being up there a month, they can't hardly walk. They do not have the ability to resurface and relate to gravity again. So they're thinking, and I highly agree with them in this thought process, that if we train them very well on the all core 360 before they went and immediately put them back on when they got back, their relationship and ability to kind of their body positioning awareness should jump back much quicker. And I like that thought. And I, I really look forward to working with them on that. We've got people in space up there for like a year mm-hmm. there. They have no gravitational body position awareness anymore. That's so right. that's huge. So that's we're great. looking forward to working with them. Maybe share an insight. If, if something comes to mind as an entrepreneur, um, you know, as a business owner, anything in particular that you've learned, you know, a lesson, if you were passing it on to a, a fellow entrepreneur over the last you know, number of years that stands out that you say, I would, I would have done this differently than this as I'm building my business. Anything come to mind? Well, this isn't a five hour program, is it? <laughs> yeah, we've got <coughs> a whole Pardon me. program on those kinds of things. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to say, I mean, there are multiple things I wish I would have known back then that I've learned throughout, but I'll tell you one of the first things or maybe the most important thing in retrospect I don't know if it was my ego or or what it really was, but for some reason, I thought Scott could do it all. Mm -hmm. I thought I could do it. I could get the venture capital. I could build it. I could engineer. I could do those things. I could market. I could sail. You know, maybe I could have picked one of those roles and and been okay at it. But what a a business requires a team. And I know I'm, I'm talking to the choir here. You know that more than anybody. But at the end of the day, what I really realized is I'm, I know what my strengths are, but I think it's even more powerful to know what your weaknesses are and put somebody in that space of the bus that you really shouldn't have been in to begin with. And I'm just going to share that took me 15 years to learn, Toby. And and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to say that. But please gather your team of trusted resources. A lot of people want to grab onto a, a, a flying rocket ship when they think it's going somewhere, but grab some people in your group that aren't what you are and build a team. Yeah. And I, that may be the most important thing I learned. Um, trust your business partners and develop a great team. That's a great point. And, I, and you're right. It's so important and it is difficult. You know, it uh, takes for some of us years and years, unfortunately, but, uh, but you're absolutely right. Well, Scott, as you're looking forward, you know, this is a great business, a great product. What gets you excited over the next year? Are there some specific goals that you have, some you know, some markets that you want to penetrate? What's what's really driving you for the next 12 months, so to speak? Well, I, I'll tell you, we're, we're hitting that tipping point, I believe. We've got over 100 units out there in the, in the market. They're all in multiple different categories. So the, a couple of years ago, the, the word all core was unknown. We're, we're starting to gather a, a following. People know who we are. Uh, so I think what I hope to do in this year the goal is educating the public and doing that to the best of my ability over this next year is where I see. And the other thing I think that's huge because we work so much in that health and wellness space is the research. 
you know, so many products come out that have wonderful stories that at the end of the day are ineffective or, or, or almost non-factual. So what we've done is we've gone back in there and done some really, really specific research in some very specific problems, low back pain, for instance, diastasis recti, urinary incontinence, you know, paraplegia. I mean, specific research based on showing results in specific categories. Because if I'm a physician and someone brought the Alcor 360 to me, it may look really interesting, but show me the money. You know, show me what works. I want to know that when I put my patient on it, I'm going to help that patient. And I'm of the belief that as physicians, we never hurt our patients. So I need to know that. And so I'm thinking with this year, one of my main goals is to build up that research deck so high that nobody will have a chance to look at it and not understand its validity. The question should never be, does it work? The question should be, how quickly can I get one? And that's what we need to get over this year. And I think we will. I think we will. I love it. And we talked a little bit about what's different uh, in this with this machine versus the alternatives. Um, so if I'm sitting there and, and I've, this sounds really interesting, do I go to the website and contact you to find out, you know, about getting one out to my, my, my city, wherever I'm based, how do they, how do they engage with you? That, that's pretty much how it goes. We have a website that, you know, you can reach out to. And if you have questions on that website is our locations if you have an interest in, in starting or getting experience, we can help set up those first couple visits for you with that provider. They can reach out and get research documents as well. We can give them a lot of data. Uh, what we're finding of interest though, is people will reach out, realize they don't have one down the street and they'll go to their own primary provider, their own physical therapist, their own chiropractor and say, I'd like to use this. Would you look into this? And I'm finding back to the word of mouth marketing. That's really what's happening. A lot of people are finding us that way and then trying to get one local. And the nice thing about it is it, that you can actually invest 30 minutes a week into your core and never have to invest 10 minutes, three times a week is all you need to do. So when people realize the time, their time is so valuable that they can get this in 30 minutes, I mean, people spend more time on a commode, pardon my French. That's, that's not, you've got the time. So it's just a matter of finding one close enough to where you can use one. Well, and I think you kind of answered the question there a little bit, but so if I'm a, just an average Joe or a patient, a potential patient, and I'd like to try this out, I can go to your website. You've got a listing of clinics in my area that I could, you know, then figure out who's got one of these. Pretty much, right, right. Hopefully we'll have one close by and we're working on it if we don't. Love it. Love it. Scott, anything we didn't cover today that you want to add or, or subtract? Uh, from oh, the conversation? No. no, I think it's, it's very, it's been an enjoyable experience. I think I would add that, you know, a lot of people out there that are in that baby boomer p space that we're really helping it's, it's a zero impact device. It requires no athletic ability. Sometimes you go to a gym and look across the room and go, I can't do that. You know, this requires nothing. So at the end of the day, I would just leave your listeners with, if you can get in your car and sit and get to a provider, I can help you optimize your core. And, and I think that's really what we want to do for everybody. Well, I love it. You know, my uh, partner with Innovation for Alpha, uh, for all you uh, to know, Yuri had an opportunity to meet up with Scott in Portland this last week as Scott was installing a new unit and Yuri got to try it out and said it was fantastic and Yuri's a guy with an athletic background and said uh, you know he really looks forward to using this and so it's a good first hand testimonial and I personally personally am excited to to give this a try Scott I'm really um, excited for your company and and you're just a joy to to spend time with I appreciate you sharing the story and we wish you all the success and want to continue to highlight the, uh, the company and the product and, and help drive that success. This belongs in every uh, clinic that, uh, that's relevant in our community. So thanks for your time. Oh, no, Tobin. Thank you so much for allowing me to share with your audience. It was, much, it was very much a pleasure of mine. I was honored. See you again soon for the next episode of Innovation for Alpha. Make sure to go to Innovation for Alpha for access to prior episode links, show notes, and other valuable resources. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any investment decisions, please consult with a professional. This show is copyrighted by Angel Indie Media, and written permission must be granted before syndication or rebroadcasting.